Hi, Mike. We're in Shop 3, where I know a lot of the machining and manufacturing take place. On this table, I see some interesting stuff. Tell me what's going on here and what we're producing. Well, this is uh, where we make all of our X9 frames. Cool. We'll take this little piece of extrusion here and uh, start cutting on it. Go ahead and feel the weight of that. Oh, man, that's a serious chunk of aluminum. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Okay, what happens next? So we start prepping it and it'll end up looking like this from that raw block. Wow, it's starting to look like a pistol frame now. Yep, it's got the magwell in it. Goes to the next machine. As you can see, it's cut out a lot more. Oh, okay, now. Yeah. So you got the, got the rough profile of it. Okay, yeah, it's getting close now. And then, that last stop, you get a finished frame. Wow, and that's pretty impressive. I'm real impressive, I mean, I, the X-Tac patterns on it. Right. Rails are in place. It, now, does the machine also put the logo on it and the, and the patent mark? It will, yes. Oh, that's, that's pretty cool. Much lighter. Yeah. 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 Dramatically lighter than, than the extrusion. Well, that's way cool. I noticed there's another block here. What's the, what's the deal on that? That's so so we also make our back straps for the X9s. Oh, cool. So we'll take a simple chunk of aluminum like this with the dovetail and in one operation. We can do all this to it. do the back strap in one shot. That is pretty cool. Yeah, impressive operation. I know that one of the things, obviously you guys are able to control the consistency from each piece is obviously very, very close. That's correct. We, uh, we, we try to get the best machines possible oh, so ahead. that we can repeat well, this every is, single time. This is pretty cool. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate the show. You're welcome. Okay. Okay, Brent, we're still here in shop three. I see we're at a different machine. This is a horizontal one? Yeah, correct. We call it the big horizontal here. Cool. Tell me what takes place here. What do you got and, and what do you kick out of this machine? Okay, so this machine, high horsepower, high RPM, big horizontal, and what we do is we take solid billet and then we turn it into what everybody loves, the AR-15 lowers. And in this machine, we use nearly 60 tools to accomplish this goal of removing about 75 to 80% of the material to give you that lightweight thing in your hand. And then from the same block, we also get the AR-9, uh, which is overall same size and weight characteristics, but with a different it's machine magwell. magwell. And it comes out with a logo and the, and the markings and everything on it? Logo, engraving, serial number, everything's good to go. Uh, we're also able to, with a few quick changes on the fixturing, uh, put the AR-10 blocks in there, which are quite bigger and heavier to get the AR-10. Um, same process, basically you gotta go through the brooch, but you get the engraving, the serial numbers, the logos, everything included. Wow. Once now, that and this off. one's got like the final bead blast finish on it. Yes, yeah, so that one's already been bead blasted and it's getting ready to go out on a shipment to get the anodized put on it. Okay, cool. I see you got another forging over there. It looks like an X9 forging. Yeah, what this machine also allows us to do, because we've got high coolant pressure, 1,000 PSI, we can run the big drills, and uh, the magwell's quite the booger on some of these machines, but with this big horizontal, we're able to blast the big drill down there, and then we also get it off here, we take it to the brooch, we get the magwell brooch, and then off to the five axis, so it yeah, might get finished. Yeah, uh, Mike was, this is the part he started talking to us about over at the other station, so that, when it arrives to that uh, machine, this is the conditions in when they start the initial process. Yes, we get it from an extrusion that basically it's like a big slice of bread. Yeah. You know, we squeeze it out, we get a whole bunch of slices of bread, and then we take it in this machine, we put the fixture cuts and the prep cuts for the brooch. Uh, basically, we went from hours apart to minutes apart once we got up to these yeah. machines. Well, hey, listen, that's impressive. Well, I appreciate it, Bryn. That's a, that's a pretty cool piece of kit right there. Absolutely. Okay, Brent, here we are at another machine. Tell me what we got and what's going on. All right, so we're at another horizontal. Uh, this is a little bit smaller, same horsepower, same spindle RPM, but uh, we cut slides over here. We bring them in 
raw forgings or shape bar depending on the application. Uh, but what we do here is the machine's a heavy hitter and we got a bunch of big drills and a bunch of roughing we got to get done. We take that and we pretty much get it all the way down to where all it needs is external cutting for whatever options we're putting on the slot. Okay, so at this point you've you've cut a lot of metal out. If, if you compare it, there's a lot of metal that's missing at this point. Yes. Okay, so from here, what's the next step? Uh, from there, then we take it, we have basically a rotisserie style fourth axis, and we're able to put in all the finish cuts, the serrations, the top serrations, the sight cuts, the logos, all that stuff is just put on as external cuts on a different machine. Wow. But where we benefit with the horizontal and the automatic running of the pallets is 24 hours operation. Basically, someone can load up uh, anywhere from 6 to 12 pallets, and then they can run all night or however long the cycle times are until they come in the next day. So what we do is we have a robot over here that brings these fancy tombstones to the door for the operator to load. And we'll stick this bar into these first stops here. And basically all we're doing here is we're getting the big initial drills done. We're taking a lot of the meat out we're, and then we're setting up fixturing for some following ops. And then once this is all loaded up, we just basically send it off. The robot will take it out of here. And if it's not ready to put on the shelf, if it is ready, it'll put it right in the machine and start cutting. And as long as they're loaded, it'll keep cutting. And then basically if they're loaded, it'll run all night until the operator comes in the next day. So essentially we're going for zero downtime. Uh, it's high hopes, but we try to keep this thing running 24 hours. Cool, and roughly how long does it take from that to where you kick out a finished slide or you're satisfied? What kind of time frame are you looking at? Uh, so we're looking at about 40 minutes per slide to get it out the door. That's pretty impressive. Yep. Wow, cool. Hey, once again, thank you. This is pretty cool stuff. Absolutely.